Welcome back to our yearly look at some of the MMORPGs we used to play. This time, we're taking a look at Dungeons & Dragons Online, DDO. And we're gonna do an overview, answer some of the questions you might have, like, is it worth it? Has anything changed since the last time we played? Has it been updated? And more importantly, do people still play the game? Join me in this journey as we play the game from the beginning, show you guys the city hub, and go through some of its contents. Dungeons & Dragons Online is a PC MMORPG, and with that said, let's do this! Welcome back, Saviors GH here. Before we play the game from the beginning, first, what is Dungeons & Dragons Online? It's a fantasy MMORPG based on the popular tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons. DDO allows players to create characters based on classic D&D races and classes, embark on adventures, and explore dungeons. It's known for its focus on party-based gameplay and its emphasis on dungeon crawling. Now going to Dungeons & Dragons Online's Steam page, they're describing DDO as a massively multiplayer online game based on the beloved RPG that started it all. One notable feature of Dungeons & Dragons Online is its faithful adaptation of the Dungeons & Dragons universe. Drawing heavily from the rich lore and iconic elements of the tabletop game, DDO immerses players in the fantastical world of Eberron. Players encounter familiar races, classes, monsters, and magical items, allowing them to experience the depth and breadth of the D&D universe firsthand. This faithful representation appeals to fans of the tabletop game and newcomers alike, offering an authentic gaming experience with the beloved D&D setting. Another notable feature is its emphasis on dungeon crawling. The game offers a variety of dungeons, quests, and challenges for players to explore and overcome often requiring teamwork and strategic coordination to succeed. Now, Dungeons & Dragons Online, originally marketed as Dungeons & Dragons Online Storm Reach, was first released on February 28, 2006, and was originally developed by Turbine, an American video game development company now known as WB Games Boston. And in 2016, the development was transferred to a new studio, Standing Stone Games, which is comprised of staff who were formerly with Turbine. Despite its early transition, Dungeons & Dragons Online received a generally positive reception from both players and critics. Reviewers praised its immersive world and engaging gameplay. Critics highlighted its faithful adaptation of the D&D universe and the captivating quest it offered. However, some reviewers noted areas for improvement such as aspects of the narrative that felt predictable. Now, in Dungeons & Dragons Online, the monetization centers around its in-game cash shop. Initially a subscription-based game, DDO shifted to a free-to-play model in 2009 with the Eberron Unlimited update. Players can purchase various enhancements from character stat upgrades and XP tomes to additional points and enhancement trees directly from the cash shop. Additionally, items like healing potions, resurrection tokens, and even boost for experience, loot, and crafting success are available for purchase. Notably, players can earn DDO points by playing the game, providing an alternative method for acquiring items without spending real money. Now, here's an update on what's happening to Dungeons & Dragons Online nowadays. In 2023, the game received numerous minor updates but one major update stood out. Vecna Unleashed. This expansion introduced a new adventure pack consisting of a variety of quests and one raid, set in the new zone of Sharn. Additionally, players gain access to a new epic destiny called Macro Technique. As for updates in 2024, there's been a lot of minor updates and in February, the game got a new archetype, Dragon Lord, and here's the roadmap. And as you can see, we are in Q2 and in Q3 is where we get all the juicy stuff like level cap increase, and new raids. So it should be good for DDO unless something bad happened and the roadmap is dumped for some reason. Now, to show you more of the features, the city if it's still alive, and what the game has to offer, let's go play the game from the start. Let's go play the game. Okay guys, here's the character creation. And these are the different styles. We got the melee over here, spellcaster, specialist, and iconic. We're gonna play as a spellcaster. So next. And by the way guys, depending on the style that you pick, different classes are going to appear. So if you pick the spellcaster, this will be the classes that you're gonna see. So how about, let me show you. If we choose melee, then we go to the class, we can be a fighter, barbarian, paladin, and a monk. 
And if I remember correctly, this Dragon Lord over here is the new archetype. The game just got this. People seem to be liking it. Okay, so anyway, let's go back to the spell. Then the class, we're gonna be a sorceress. Man, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because we're not gonna linger too long at the beginning. I'm gonna go directly to the town. And then maybe let's do a little bit of questing. Okay, path. Let's be an arcane cannon. And then race. I played as a dragonborn last time. So maybe let's play as a human. Half orc, half elf. There goes the races if you're interested. Dwarf, draw elf. Okay, let's play as a draw elf. Next. Now looks. Here's the character customization, guys. How many hairstyles? We got 28 hairstyles. And here are the different colors. So how many eyebrows? 8 eyebrows. How many eyes? We got 16 eyes to choose from. And we can change the color over here. Now how many nose? 3 noses to choose from. Okay. Uh, I think depending on the race that you pick, there are more selection if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay, anyway, we're done with this. Let's name our character. Man, again, this is the boss fight. It's very difficult to name your character. How about this? This should work. Create. And we are in the game. This guy is talking, so let's interact with this guy first before Speak we do anything me. else. Alright. Okay, the game wants us to follow the rogue. But first... Ah, okay, let's follow this rogue. It's gonna lead us to these tents over here. So before we start, controls. We can move with WSD, guys. Can we jump? Yes, we could. We can attack with the left mouse button. And the right mouse button, I think, is to rotate the camera. How about the middle mouse button? It's also to rotate the camera, but it's but it's centered around the character. Okay, so let's check out our bag for beginner support boxes. Nope, we have nothing except this lesser heart of wood. But don't worry, guys, as you play the game, the game is going to give you stuff that you can use in battle. And as you can see, in my opinion, the graphics is still up to the task. I don't completely hate this graphics right here. Everything is completely in 3D. Okay, so I'm going to go switch to my other character so I can show you guys the city. Then maybe we're going to do some quests. And okay, we're at the city. This place is called the Harbor. Next part of the city is the marketplace. And in that marketplace, some of the houses are connected to it. So let's check out the places where we can see if there are people around. There's somebody over there. But usually, it's in the auction places, the banks, and maybe the class trainers. So let's go check those places out. There are class trainers over here. Nobody is here. Okay, there goes the tavern. People usually go there for quest. And there he goes. Oh, he went too quickly. I'm gonna ask him something. Okay, anyway, there goes the auctioneer. Nobody's there. And by the way, guys, if you're going to play DDO, play on the Orient server. There's a lot more people there. And then Argon, Argonesson. I don't know how you pronounce that one. Let's just call it Argon. Those two are very populated. And I'm playing at Argon. And there goes, at the bank, there are a few people over here. So yeah. By the way, guys, this city is very large. So running into people happens a lot because players are going from NPC to NPC to do things. They're not really usually stopping at one area. They stop at different NPC. As you can see, there goes another one over here. She probably came from the class trainers over there at the harbor. So how about let's go to the marketplace. And as you can see, there's somebody over here at the trainers. And yeah, I think we should check out some stats so you can figure out if this game is low spec or not. If you can run it or not. And there it goes. Man, why is the FPS too high? Ah, the FPS is not capped. This is probably pushing my GPU. Oh no, not really. It's only consuming 115 watts. Okay, so as you can see, this game is low spec. Usually the GPU memory utilization is only around 2 gigabytes. But since I have a browser on, it's almost 3 gigabytes. Anyway, even though if it's 3 gigabytes, it's still considered a low spec game. 4 gigabytes is for low end GPUs now. So most probably on your APUs or any Intel equivalent, this would run on them. Man, I'm kind of worried that the FPS is not capped. <laughs> this could easily go 500 frames. I think, thankfully, the game is not optimized very well. <laughs> because it's not using my GPU that much. Let's roam, let's roam around and check out for other people. And there it goes. There's somebody over here. And he jumped over there. Where can I get that mount? Give it to me for free. 
<laughs> Look at this, somebody over here. So there's a decent amount of people checking this game out. Okay, so anyway, how about let's do some questing. Let's take a quest from the tavern. And here we are in front of the tavern. Let's enter the wayward lobster. This is where you take quests. You can also eat here, recover stuff. Let's talk to the barkeep. I am an adventurer looking for work, level 3. Man, I think I've done this all already. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I haven't shown it to you. So let's do this, the captives. Let's go. So the quest in this game, you take it from here. And then something on the minimap will blink. And that's where you need to go. As you can see, the door is blinking. So we need to go over there. That's where the quest is. And now we're outside. And as you can see at the minimap, there's an arrow. You need to follow that for the quest. Leveling here is not that difficult. You just do the, keep doing the quest. And I think this is where we need to go. There goes Pearl Drumling. I was reading it as dumpling. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay. Oh yeah, I've done this. Repeat the captives. <laughs> okay. I played this by the way two years ago. Enter. I have another account. This one is on Steam. This is the one that I use for YouTube because I always get banned for something. <laughs> In case I get banned, my main account doesn't get banned. Okay, so anyway, let's do the quest. Oh yeah. Uh I think I should show you guys summoning a hireling. The minions, guys. Okay, let's open up the inventory. As you can see, I have this sorcerer level 1 contract, Elizabeth Cinder over here. Let's open her. Oh, we need to be close to the entrance to summon her. You can buy this in the towns, guys. You need to look for an NPC that sells hirelings. Let's summon her. You can buy healers, tankers, and DPS. And this one is a DPS right here. If you're having problem with healing, just go get a cleric and she will heal you when she is accompanying you. Okay, so let's follow the arrow. And okay, I think we are at the quest area. And we need to find the entrance to the orc outpost. Let's look for it. Okay, so if I remember correctly, it's over there, the entrance. And what is this? We need to hunt down this guy, Yoga Flame. Come back, guys. There he goes. And he's defeated. This is a very rudimentary form of action combat. And it actually kind of feels tab targety. Because when you go near an enemy, it would kind of highlight an enemy. But the way you attack is like in action games. This game probably started as tab target when they're in development. And then they saw the pros and cons and decided to salvage it and make it action combat. Okay, more enemies over here. Let's hunt them down. Not familiar with the skills of this thing. <laughs> the questing in this game revolves around, you know, looking for places and then levers. There's a lot of levers and putting runes on slots to open doors. What? What happened to Elizabeth Cinder? Let's yoga flame this guy. And he's dead. Okay, there goes the lever. I really like that narrator in this game. Makes me feel that the developers really cared about telling the story. Okay, there's a barbarian over here. Let's go defeat him. Another lever. I told you guys. There's a lot of levers in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of a rune that I need to find. <laughs> defeat this guy. What's our quest anyway? We need to free Lady Asdel. Lady Asdel. Okay, let's look for them. There's another mini boss over here. A captain. Let's defeat him. And he's defeated. Okay, so where do we need to go? And there goes the entrance. There's a human over there. What? You traitor! Get him! And he's also dead. Okay, let's open up another lever. And where's Lady Adzel? Let's go! Oh yeah, one of the captives. Open the prison cell using a lever. Okay, there it goes. Oh, it's one of the guards. There's another one over here with an orc barbarian guard. Yo, bro. Ooh. Okay, finish him off. Get up and fight. What, you're dead already? Okay, let's free this other guard over here. I think she's a bodyguard. Let's look for the lady Azel. Ooh, this, that guy is dead. 
Get him. And that guy is running away. Defeat him. It's all yours, guys. Okay. He's defeated. And opened up this cage with the use of the lever, of course. There goes Lady Asdel. Now we need to defeat Gravnok, the Orc Commander. Let's go. Again, use the lever. Okay. Use the lever online. Defeat the boss. Oh, you have a lot of HP, huh? I'm gonna karate chop you. Let's go. Die. And he's dead. And that's Dungeons and Dragons Online in 2024. So is Dungeons and Dragons Online worth it? I'd say yes. Updates are coming for the game. People are still playing. And if you're going to play, play in Orient. And by the way, you can play this outside of Steam. And I like how the game didn't follow how traditional MMORPGs progresses. It's not overly repetitive. And it's a breath of fresh air to hear voices in an MMO. Wherein pretty much most MMOs just give you a text. Listening to what's happening in the game is nicer. Anyway, it's free. So why not try the game out? And guys, do you want to see the latest MMO news? There it goes on the screen. Leave a like before you go. And this is Gaming Hardcore. See you in the next one.